Shut up and sit down. Greetings, fellow Earth travelers. Oblix here, coming at you today from Project Ozone Light. How y'all doing today? So, another great day up here in the sky. Let's get kitted up again. And get back in our regular view. Let's cycle through the, review, the views several times because I can't find the right one. So last time we worked on automating these machines and we got pretty far along. I did tell you I'd do the mechanism ones off camera and I did. I'll show you real quick what we did there. So we st everything starts with this enriching factory. And what we've got this guy doing is producing these compressed items. So compressed carbon, compressed redstone, compressed diamonds, and compressed obsidian. Uh, technically, I guess it's refined obsidian, because it's taking the refined obsidian dust, but they just call it compressed obsidian. Uh, the reason being is when you make an alloy, so let's look at alloy. When you make this guy right here, for example, and this is just an example, if you do one redstone dust and one iron ingot, you get one alloy. But you can put one redstone dust in this guy and get one of those compressed redstones. When you get that, you can get eight alloy. So you put in eight pieces of iron, one compressed redstone dust, which is a piece of redstone that's been run through here first, and you can get eight alloy. So it's just saving resources if you use the compressed variants of things. So we're compressing items first using that interface. Now what we've got over here are our infusing factories. And each one of these is set up to infuse with a different material. So this is infusing with the carbon. So we're importing, well technically we're exporting those uh, compressed carbon into this machine. This guy's doing the redstone the diamonds, and the obsidian. Now the way we're getting those in there is through these guys, these import, or I'm sorry, export buses. So I've separated off an AE2 channel, or channels actually, there's four of them. This is the one running the interfaces along the top here. But notice it, none of this other mess connects to it. So I've got these cable anchors here keeping them separate. I've got this line coming out with just a smart cable pulling across here and it's using the four channels for these export buses. Each one of these export buses has uh, one item it is exporting. So you see there's the carbon, the redstone, the diamond, and the obsidian. But you notice they all have this crafting card up here. What that does is allow the system to say whenever I need to export a, a compressed obsidian and I don't have any in the system, I can craft it. So it's calling over here to this interface and saying, hey, craft one of those things. So the interface puts one in the, you know, puts a piece of redstone in the machine. It comes out as a compressed redstone. It gets sucked down our pipe, uh, down our ender IO pipe goes way over here to this chest then gets imported through that importer right there back into our AE2 system. At that point the AE2 system can push it back out through that export bus and into our machine. So we're doing that with all four of them. Now if we look at the machines we can see see how this is purple around here? This is the output, so they're blue. This is the input, it's red. But the special material is purple. If we look at our side config, you can see the input is red up at the top, the output at the bottom is blue, and then our special material on the back of the machine is purple. So that's the extra material. So that's our redstone or our diamond or our obsidian. See how it's going in there. And that's how we've set these guys up. 
Now, these guys are new. Uh, and what these guys are are analog crafters from extra utilities. They don't require power, and they're fairly slow, but for what we're doing here, they work perfect. Uh, remember we used these when we had our die farm set up back uh, when we had the central platform back there, our Batania die farm. What these guys are doing is taking all the inferium blocks that we get. You know, we're growing inferium in our mystical agriculture farm up there. It's dumping it into a storage compacting storage drawer, which is turning it into blocks. I'm exporting those blocks into this analog crafter. The analog crafter is set to sticky and spread items. And what that does is keep at least one item in the crafter, so our master infusion crystal and four of the inferior blocks. So as new items come in, they're just going to spread out around here. I've got the sides turned off with the X. If you just click on them till it says X, it grays them out and turns them off. As it gets four inferior blocks, it produces a prudentium block. It'll craft a prudentium block for us. And what's happening is those prudentium blocks are getting sent down here to this crafter. Then they're being crafted up into the intermedium. It being sent over here, the intermediums getting crafted up into the supremium or superium, which is being sent up here. The superium is being crafted into the supremium, which is being sent over here. The supremium is being crafted into the insanium, and that's being pushed back into our AE2 system. So let me show you how we're doing that back here. And the reason I'm doing that is because it is easier to teach the AE2 system how to downgrade essence than it is to upgrade essence. Because to upgrade, I need these master infusion crystals. To downgrade, I don't. I can take a, a piece of insanium, put it in a crafting grid, and get four supremium out of it with no uh, infusion crystal. Then I can take the... Supremium and get Superium, Superium get Intermedium, Intermedium get Prudentium, and Prudentium get Inferium. Just go all the way back down with no Master Infusion Crystal needed. To go up, I need a Master Infusion Crystal. So that's why we're doing this. So all I'm using is Ender IO, and I'm using... Uh, this first one is getting an export from our AE2, and the export is just Inferium Blocks. It does the craft. The Prudentium comes out on the green channel, and then we just follow the green channel. It goes into this crafter here, where we know it turns uh, the Prudentium into Intermedium. The Intermedium is coming out on the brown channel, and we follow the brown channel. It's going in here. And we know that this crafter is turning the Intermedium into Superium. That's coming out on the blue channel, so we follow the blue channel up, going into this crafter. Uh, the Superium is turning into Supremium. That's coming out on the purple channel. The purple channel is going into here. Turning the Supremium into Insanium. And then that's being imported through that AE2 import bus right here. Nothing special about it. Just straight sucking up the items. Whatever's crafted out of this crafter. Now this crafter's not connected to anything. It's just here for looks. So uh, to kind of even out the, the look of the machines there. But that's basically the, the big stuff I've done. Um, I did do also off camera uh, our, I've got a dimensional transceiver set up to receive uh, gunpowder from our uh, AE2 system from our storage drawers uh, over in the purple dome. All I did was hook up a dimensional transceiver right behind this, the storage drawer, uh, pushing items into the dimensional transceiver then they're pushing them out into this drawer. And that remember, this is our five times ore processing machine. Uh, so we put one ore in, we get five ingots out at the end of the, the line. And I did run this line from our AE2 system, four channels, all the way down here. And this is connecting this machine, which is new, uh, and our five times ore processing. So we're import or exporting raw ore through that line right there, and I'll show you up on top here in a second, and we're importing at the end of the line down here. So let's go on top and I'll show you. So if we come over here, this is the first machine of our five times ore processing. So we start here, and as the ore processes all the way down here, by the time it hits here, uh, we end up with five ingots for every one ore we put in the system. 
So we're using this export bus here, and we're just taking lead, silver, iron, copper, osmium, and gold. And we're just, uh, I've got these capacity cards. Remember when we looked over here, uh, these export buses only had one. See, only one block is open. The others are grayed out. That's kind of a light gray, but you, you can't put items in here for it to export. The capacity card expands that. It lets you add more items to the list. So you can put a maximum of two capacity cards. One capacity card gives you this plus shape. You know, it gives you the two on the sides and the two on the top and bottom. You get the original one to start with, and then that one adds four. The second capacity card adds the corner, so you get an additional four. So you can go up to a three by three grid, or nine items in total, using two capacity cards. And they're just pushing into this chest. The chest is then flowing the items through the machines, and it's going all the way down until it hits here. And then I've got an import bus right there, sucking the items back into our AE2 system. So whenever I get an, a piece of iron ore or copper ore, uh, it instant you know put it in my AE2 system. It instantly goes in here and gets processed into five ingots, and then brought back into the system. Now this guy I've got. He is set up over here only because I needed this pressure line with steam. Steam is one of the items we're producing as a byproduct of this setup here. Uh, so I've piped the steam into this machine, chemical injection chamber. You see we've got it right here, water vapor or steam. And this guy, uh, this interface is taught how to make clay. Basically, if we take a piece of dirt and we put it into this machine, when it's getting water vapor, it'll turn it into clay. So whenever I need clay, I just uh, I can do an auto craft for it now. I've got, got 83 in here now, but if I say, hey, give me 10 clay. It's going to use 10 dirt, and it's just going to pipe them in here, mix them with the steam, and output clay. And then I've got it import bus right here just sucking the items out of the machine and bringing them back into our system. I can't remember what I needed clay for but I needed a bunch of clay and I didn't have a, a way to produce that so I, I came up with this to auto produce clay. Now I want to show you one more thing down here and it's nothing new we've already seen this before but I just kind of want to remind you of what we did down here. Remember this is all the loot from our mob farm. The red or the tower that's right over there is, is dropping mobs to their death and they're giving us all their their bits as they die. Uh, and it's coming in through this ender chest right here. So we see all the different mob pieces fl flowing in. As we get closer over there it, it will increase the amount of items that we're getting. Uh, because I want to use this chest for some more stuff today. So what I want to do is I want to get our material from the nether here into the overworld. So we've got the cow farm over there that's producing all manner of stuff, but right now I'm having to manually go over there and get it, and I don't want to do that anymore. Uh, we also have our blaze farm over there, and it's storing everything over there as well. Um, I do have an ender chest set up to get blaze rods, but uh, I want to just automatically bring all that stuff over here and put it into our IE2 system. Uh, so we're going to be using that ender chest right there to help with that because we're getting loot bags out of the blazes Just like we do with any other mob So I want to make sure we process those and not just destroy them right now. They're just being destroyed They're going straight into a trash can and disappearing forever So we might as well if we're going to be bringing things back to the overworld We might as well make sure we process these loot bags uh, To take care of that and that'll that'll be nice uh, We'll get some more goodies out of that. So uh, we need to make sure that we have an ender chest on green, brown, pink. Okay, and it is uh, diamond encoded to us, but green, brown, pink. And I've already got one right here ready to go. So let's get to the purple dome, and I'll show you a quick change I've made over there that will support what we plan to do in the nether today. So this, remember, is our quantum ring for the red dome. So this transmits our AE2 signal 
over to the red dome and allows us to wirelessly transmit our entire inventory and all of our auto crafting over to the red dome. Well, I've set up the ex very similar thing right here, another quantum ring, and I've already got the uh, quantum entangled singularities in there. Uh, and this one is linked to another ring in the nether. And I'll show you that when we get to the nether. Now, on this guy, uh, we did use P2P tunnels, if you remember when we set it up, because we needed, well, we got 25 channels on the pink, and we've got another 25 on the, the red. So we're using a ton of channels. That's more than uh, one dense cable can handle. That's 50 channels. A dense cable can only carry 32, so either I need to, you know, to run a bunch of dense cables into this guy, or I can run one and some P2P channels. So we did that over here. I don't think I'm going to need that many channels in the nether. I think these between these two cables, we'll be able to do everything we need to do. So I just ran the cables directly into here. I think we'll be fine. Now I've got the the red and the pink go to the red dome. The brown and the orange go to the nether. Uh, I think the colors somewhat suit where it's going. Over here I'll have the uh, green dome, so I'll have one that, another uh, ring go into the green dome, and we'll use green and lime green. And then over here is for the blue dome. I'll set up another ring, go into the blue dome, and we'll use blue and light blue. So we'll get that down the road, but right now we're going to focus on the nether. So this is looking pretty cool, I think. I like that you can look down and see all the guts there. Very nice, very nice. So let's get on over to the cow farm. I've done a little bit of prep work over there. Now, I did... I mean, let's have some real talk here. Uh, Oblix done goofed up. I recorded this whole video earlier, not realizing that my mic was muted. So I'm just sitting here recording, da-da-da-da-da-da-da, did all the work, come to find out, well, did a bunch of the work, come to find out, I was muted. So you'll find that's why you're finding a lot of the work already done. So I've already set up the ring and I've already started running these cables. Uh, the goal here is to take all the material that's in these drawers. Because right now if I want gold, I have to come over here and I have to get gold out of here and then put it in my system like this. So if I, you know, that's, it's great. It works wonderful. The cows are always producing the gold, but it it gets old having to come over here and do that. And some of the stuff I want to craft requires, like one of the things I, I need to craft, I'm going to need 300,000 iron ingots. Uh, and that's just for part of the machine. 300,000! I only have 130,000 in here. And this is a max capacity drawer. It's full emerald upgrades. So I'm going to need a ton of material. Uh, so I and I'm going to need it all back at in the overworld, all inside my AE2 system. So I want to hardwire these guys up to go straight to my AE2 system. So what I've done is I've come down here and I've ripped out all the Ender IO conduits that were connecting the casting tables or the basins to these storage drawers. So I pulled out all those conduits and I've put in place import buses, and one piece of smart cable. Uh, all brown, because I'm going to use brown the brown color cable for this side. Uh, this is the item side. The liquid side's over there. You can kind of see it on the other side, on the other wall over there. We'll deal with liquids further down the road. We probably will need P2P tunnels. Well, we definitely will need P2P tunnels for the liquid. Uh, or we'll transport it through some other means, through dimensional transceivers or something else. But... Um, We'll come up with that down the road. Today I want to focus on items. So what I want to do is take brown dense cable, because there are 30 of these uh, connections here. And a dense cable can transport 32 items, or 32 channels. Each one of these import buses is a channel. So we're just going to run this dense cable back like this, and it's going to connect to all those smart cables and import buses that we've already uh, run. Now, when I connect that there, give it a second, and this is going to light up with 30 channels. And there we go. So we look in our top right corner, you see 30 of 32 channels. So now if I shift right click on these guys, you'll see them all slowly decreasing the amount of items that they have. 
So all these items are now being funneled into our AE2 system eh, fairly slowly, but they're all going there. Now eventually what I'm going to do, uh, right now the drawers are not no longer connected to these uh, tables. What I will do eventually is I will get rid of the drawers and take these import buses and these smart cables out. I will put the import bus directly on this casting table. So the material as it gets produced will instantly get sucked into our system. But first I've got to get it out of the drawers. You know, first I've got so much in the drawers and I've got to get it all out of the drawers before I can do that. Uh, so I can rip these drawers out. So we're going to set this up and we're just going to let it process for a while. You know, we're going to let it do its thing. Uh, so we can clean it out. So right now we're cleaning out the drawers. And that'll run for quite a while. I can go ex add accelerators to all of these import buses and I may do that at a later time. If you right click on them, these four can be uh, accelerator carts. Uh, so we can throw those in there. Uh, here I'll show you. If I do, let's see if I have any. I do. I've got some. So if we take these accelerator cards, I grab this import bus. Let's look at the speed it's running now. It's running a decent clip, about one a second or so. If I take these accelerator cards and pop them in like so, now we look at it. Now you see it's grabbing hundreds at a clip. So it's going significantly faster. The store will be empty in no time. So. Let me go back and uh, add them in. I also need to get all these sucked into our system as well. So once one of these empties, I'll, I'll take one of those and drop it in there and let it suck that up and, uh, you know, into our system as well. Now I want to work on the blaze farm. And if you remember, let's go up. I did move our elevators over here. So this is the top floor. So here's all our cows doing all the production. This is the item cows and this is the fluid cows or the liquid cows. There's our blaze farm. So go down one level, here's our production facility. If I go down one more level, here's some more cows. So these are more item cows, these are more liquid cows. Same setup, just upside down. So this is as far down as we go. We only have three floors in this building. If I go to the top and turn around, this takes us to our blaze farm. And I am going to turn my magnet off as I go over here because otherwise I collect all the blaze bits. So we've just got a restored blaze spawner in there producing blazes and they're getting killed right down there. Yeah, just like that. Nice. Right on cue. The material, normally I have this closed off, but I've opened it right now so we can see what's going on in here, uh, is being sucked up by this absorption hopper right here. The XP is going into that drawer or into that drum and then into this experience obelisk. So you see we have 1400 levels in there right now. The items are coming out of the absorption hopper and going to the side here and then coming up right here. And they're trying to go in the storage door. This, this uh, output is set to, let's see if I can click on it. I'm hitting the absorption hopper instead of the, the servo. But it's set to nearest first. Yeah, I can't get to it. Uh, it's set to nearest first. So it's trying to put things in here. If they can't go in here, they're going over here to the trash. So it is going to the nearest place first. This is my output to the ender chest for blaze rods. So it's just sucking directly out of the drawer here. And if I need blaze rods in the overworld, I can throw down this you know, orange, orange, yellow ender chest and there's all my blaze rods. I want this is, you know, it works, but it's not elegant. I want them to go directly into our storage system and I don't want to have to deal with, you know, farting around with an ender chest. So um, first thing we need to do is I want to get rid of this guy, this trash can. We don't want to dispose of any items. You notice I don't have any drawer for... Uh, loot bags. So all the loot bags are just winding up here in the trash and we don't want to do that. So we want to get rid of this and we want to start sending all the items into this dense cable. Uh, if we go follow this guy back, it goes back into that original room where our ring is and this is just the uh, orange cable coming back into the ring. 
and this will head you know, send the items back to the overworld. So we want to get all the stuff in here. To do before we can do that, I need to make sure that the items are going to be appropriately processed. Because I'm going to do this, the uh, blaze stuff differently than I'm going to do this. Here I'm importing directly into our AE2 system. The loot bags need to be processed through a loot bag opening system that we have back over in the red dome. So let's go to the red dome. And we see over here, what's happening is the loot bags are showing up here. I did a whole episode on this if you want to see the details about it. But the loot bags are, are showing up here. They're being pushed out of this controller down this line right here, and they're coming into this controller. This is just a, a temporary storage location if it gets too many at one time. And you just saw one come out of this controller and go down here into this bag recycler. And so it's opening the loot bag. It's pushing the loot down this path. And it's coming. It's going nearest first, so it's going to go into that controller if it can. If it can't, it's going to go straight down into the trash. So we're saving all of this stuff out of the loot bags. So the epic bacon and the golden apples and the wheat and the carrots and the compasses and obsidian and sand and all that stuff is being saved out of the loot bags. Everything else is just going into the trash. So all the armor and pickaxes and that garbage is just heading right to the trash and being dumped. So we want to make sure our loot bags show up over here. But I want to make sure if inadvertently any of the blaze materials, any of this stuff shows up, I want to make sure it gets processed and not sent to the trash. So Inferium we've already got. So we have Inferium. It's taken care of. These Molten Cores. Let's make sure we have a Molten Core in here. We do not. So let's add Molten Cores. And we'll put them just right there. Now as items show up in here, they're being exported here to this dimensional transceiver and sit into our AE2 system. So all these items, you know, these drawers should all be empty for the most part. Uh, these will get sucked out here shortly and again sent to our AE2 system. Oh, I was looking at that going, why is this sending loot bags? It's This is a blacklist. It's sending everything but loot bags. So anything it can grab that's not a loot bag is going to go back to that, the A2 system. It will get these eventually down the road. Uh, so we want to add the sulfur. Uh, make sure we don't already have sulfur in here. We do. Uh, right there. So we don't need that. Blaze rods. Uh, the Inferium we already have, so we can just pop that in there. Blaze Rods we do not have, so we will pop those in there. And it'll make sure we process those two. They won't go into the trash in the event they get pulled into that system. So now let's get on back to the cow farm. And... Let's get this set up. So we're already processing all our metals out of those drawers. Now we just need to process these items. So what I think I want to do is break this and hmm, I'm trying to think what the easiest way to do this is going to be. And it's probably going to be to... Oh, as I break things, they're getting sucked up by here. So I need to be conscientious of that. Let's actually, let me turn the farm off while we're working here. There we go. The fan's turned off. That shuts the farm down. And I want to pull... items I 
think we're going to go direct. That is just sucking up everything. Seared stone? Did I break seared stone? Oh, was this seared stone down there? I was like, the farm's made out of seared stone. Please don't break the seared stone. I don't want to break the farm. Have the blaze come running all over me. Uh, so we're just going to bring this up. Well, that's going to come. We can use our wrench and take it off, but I don't want to. Oh, hello. Stuck in a wall. Stuck in something. Uh, I think we'll just bring it over like this. I didn't want it there. Dang it. Why am I having trouble hitting things? There. And let's see. Yeah. We'll just bring them up right there. And that's still going to process the items, but it's not going to process into those drawers, which is fine. Now we're going to set up a chest. We'll use a gold chest and we're just going to pop it right here so all the items will start showing up in this chest. Everything this is absorption hopper collects will start showing up in here. And what we'll do is run a cable. We're going to need a smart cable. Small? Smart cable. I want an orange one. Oop, we're going to need some more smart cable. Luckily, we have an auto craft for that. Let's get 64 cruising. And then let's get some orange cable going. And we're also going to need, we won't need that trash can anymore. I will need an import bus. So there we go with that. And I'm just going to rip these out here, like so. And we're going to put the import bus there on the chest and connect this to that. And here we'll see a channel light up. There we go, one channel of eight. And the items are getting sucked in. Now this is actually pulling them directly into our our storage system. I really don't want those loot bags going directly into our storage system. Hmm. What I could do is a bit more convoluted, but I think will work better in the long run. So let's not do this. Let me turn this back on. Since the blades are off, I'm going to tear this out. I'm going to do this a different way that I think will work better in the long run. I'm just breaking everything. So let's do this. We're, I'm basically going to put this back the way it was. And there we go. It's going to hit the drawer first. Then it's going to come down just like it was going to go to the trash can. Only this time, instead of a trash can, it's going to be that chest. We're still going to put the import bus on the chest, and I'm going to connect that import bus with a smart cable. Just like that. So all the items are going to try to go into the drawers, which is fine. They make great buffers. The leftovers are going to come down here into this chest. And you know what? I think I can do even better than this. We are going to run these items out this way and pop down this chest. Remember our mob farm? Yeah. 
so our loot bags will go directly to our mob farm to be processed. But all the items will still go in these drawers, so we want to get these items to here. Uh, so what I think we'll do is pull this cable back. Let's... I'm kind of designing this on the fly, if you can't tell. And let's see our... there it is. I was looking for our controller. It's right there. We're going to... Let's close that off so we don't mistakenly go over there. Let's go up here to our controller. There it is. So I think we can take out safely all this cable. Like so. And let's put... Hmm. I want to get this there. Let's go here and there and there and there and there. And then I'm going to just switch over to the not dense cable. Actually, I probably should have done that down here, huh? Make more sense. Switch over to just the regular old smart cable. Now remember, smart cable has eight channels, dense cable has 32. Uh, but the smart cable is needed to connect to these import buses. The dense doesn't connect to it. So I'm going to put that import bus right there. And I'm going to bring it a smart cable down and connect it up like so. So give it a second and it will recognize if we've connected everything up right. There we go, our one channel. So now if we come up here, we'll see that these items should be decreasing. And they are. They're being imported into our system. Nice. So I think the way the storage drawers work is that when you're using a controller over here, we're not using a controller. Well, hello. How are you? Nice to see you. Now you're dead. <laughs> what are you? What? What? Why are you here? Nobody likes you. Go away. Don't mess up my cows. You leave my cows alone. I don't want y'all breaking anything in here. Apparently we need more light. There we go. Alright, back to work. So over here... Uh, in the cow farm. Oh, hello, loot bag. Uh, we're not using a controller. We're going directly off the drawers. That's why I can pull all the drawers at one time. You see that drawer is already done. Uh, pretty much anything I put in that drawer will just be sucked away back into our AE2 system. Uh, but because there's no controller, we're pulling all the drawers at once. Because here... We're going through the controller. It's going to go to whatever drawer the controller sees first. So the controller seeing this drawer first, so it's pulling items in from here. So it's not going to pull these items until this drawer is done. Now, once it is, it'll 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 start getting that stuff too. But the cool thing about this is the bags, the loot bags, are going to go over here, just like this, and be auto-processed by our system instantly. So these are actually are probably already gone. Yeah, there was just a visual glitch that they were still there. They really weren't. So, awesome. We're now automatically processing our blaze loot bags. And we're pulling all of our blaze material back to the overworld. We'll turn our farm back on and button up the wall here. Then our cow farm, we're sucking all the material we had made before, earlier, we're pulling all of that into our system as well. So, you know, all of this uh, steel is being sucked into our system and all of the redstone and all the emerald and all this stuff is getting sucked into our AE2 system, which is awesome. So we're just gonna let that sit here and run for a while. Uh, let this guy do its, do its thing. Uh, 
I should probably put some put a facade there just to make that look prettier. Put one over there too. I'll do that later. But yeah, that's uh, like I said. Once the the drawers are all emptied out, we'll come back at a later time and put in uh, a system to pull directly out of these casting tables. And that's just going to basically be an import bus on the back of the the casting table directly into our system. Or we can set up Ender IO conduits all along the back of these casting tables, or mechanism. Uh, logistical transporters or uh, thermal dynamics item ducts it doesn't matter they all do the same thing heck uh, you know what whatever mod you want extra utilities item our uh, pipes we could use those too uh, we just need to get the items down here we could put a chest down here pipe all the items into a chest and then put one import bus on the chest that'll use one channel instead of 30 uh, but it really doesn't matter. I don't need the extra two channels. I don't need 30 channels here, but I have 30 channels, so an import bus on each one is fine. Uh, won't hurt a thing. But I think that is all the time I got for today. We're going to let this guy sit here and cook, and we'll check on it in the next episode. As always, I sure do appreciate you guys coming to hang out with me. And until next time, get out there and make some noise. See ya.